subject is right choices in Christian life. <coughs> Philippians <coughs> chapter 1 verse 6. Quote, I am sure that the good work God began in you will continue until he completes it on the day when Jesus Christ comes again. Last Sunday, I started preaching from Philippians. <coughs> It is a letter. Paul wrote this letter and sent it to the church in a place called Philippi, near Greece. Last week, I told you how Paul loved the people in the church in the city of Philippi and how they supported him. Now I will continue preaching from chapter 1. <coughs> chapter 1. <coughs> six. Quote, I am sure that the good work God began in you will continue until he completes it on the day when Jesus Christ comes again. Paul felt sure that the people in Philippi really loved Jesus and had real faith. Why was he so sure? Verse 7, quote, I know I am right to think like this about all of you because you are so close to my heart. This is because you have all played such an important part in God's grace to me. Now, during this time that I am in prison, and whenever I am defending and proving the truth good news. <coughs> Paul was sure about their faith because he had seen the evidence, the proof. What proof? They cared about his work, telling people about the Lord Jesus. They supported Paul to defend the gospel truth. This is why Paul was so sure that their faith was real. Question. How had the Philippian people helped Paul? Number one, they sent him money even though they were poor themselves. Number two, they sent someone to visit him in prison. Question, how did the Philippian people defend the gospel? Answer, they explained it very carefully to other people. <coughs> there were Jewish people called Judaizers living in Philippi too. They had followed Paul on his missionary journey there. These Judaizers said that they believed in Jesus. 
but they attacked Paul's teachings. They said, quote, Jesus is not enough to save you. You must be circumcised and obey the Jewish laws too. Then you will be saved. This was wrong. The Christians in Philippi knew that these teachings were not the true gospel. They rejected the Judaizers and did not allow them in the church. They understood the true gospel. Question, what about me? Do I defend the true gospel? Example, I am a Christian. I have asked Jesus to forgive my sins. Jesus has saved me. Now I believe in Jesus. But that's all. My faith is not growing. This is wrong. The Bible says that my faith must grow. Means that I must make progress in my Christian life. Example. In the 1900s, <coughs> in this country, some pastors began to attack the Bible. These people said that the Bible was not true. This was called the Higher Criticism Movement. This was wrong, but some Christians were afraid. They said, we should not criticize these men because they are important teachers. <laughs> these Christians knew that these pastors were teaching wrong doctrine, but they did not defend the gospel. Example, some people believe that the Lord's Day, Sunday, is not important anymore. They say, quote, that was only important in the Old Testament times, not now. End quote. This is wrong. We should obey God's commands and keep Sunday as a special time to worship and serve God. Question. How can I keep Sunday a special time for God? Number one. I will choose not to work on a Sunday if possible. Number two, I will not turn on the TV <coughs> or just do things to please myself. <coughs> Number three, I will come to church every week to worship God. And number four, I will tell other people about the Lord Jesus. Verse 8, quote, God knows that I want very much to see you. I love all of you with the love of Christ Jesus.
The King James Bible says, quote, For God is my record. Paul said that God was his witness. <coughs> Means he was saying something very serious. God knew what was in Paul's heart. That Paul really loved the Christians in Philippi. This verse is very helpful to me too. Question, what about me? Do I love other Christians like Paul? <coughs> the Lord Jesus commands me to love other Christians. Let's read the Lord's commands. John chapter 13, verse 34. Quote, I give you a new command, love each other. You must love each other just as I loved you. <coughs> John chapter 15, verse 12. Quote, this is what I command you. Love each other as I have loved you. John chapter 15, verse 17. Quote, this is my command, love each other. End quote. The Lord Jesus repeated this command means it is very important. How do I show my love for Christian people? Number one, I should want to meet with other Christians at church. And number two, we can talk to each other and help each other. Christian people have a special, close relationship. Remember that Paul experienced a lot of pain and suffering. Why? Because he was telling people about the Lord Jesus. And many people hurt him. Sometimes he may not have had enough to eat or a place to sleep. But Paul was encouraged. Why? Because of the Christians in Philippi. He knew they supported him and prayed for him. They loved him. Paul loved the Lord Jesus, and this encouraged him. But he was also encouraged by his friendship with these Christians too. I should love other Christians like Paul did. Sometimes another Christian may upset me. We will upset each other because we still have sin in our hearts. <coughs> but I must still love them. God has given me a wonderful blessing. I can share my life with other Christian people. <coughs> We understand each other.
we believe in the same faith. God has given us a new character, so we want to please him. If I don't have close friendships with other Christians, means I am missing out <coughs> on this wonderful blessing. Example. I am a Christian, but I don't have any Christian friends. I don't come to the Bible study or the prayer meeting. I come to church and go straight home. I don't speak to anyone. This is wrong. This means I am missing out on God's blessing. Also, I am on my own, so the devil can easily attack my faith. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. Quote, This is my prayer for you, that your love will grow more and more <coughs> that you will have knowledge and understanding with your love. End quote. Paul's prayer really began in chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Quote, I thank God every time I remember you. And I always pray for all of you with joy. End quote. In verse 9, <coughs> Paul continued to pray for them. He wanted their love to grow more and more. Question. What should I love more and more? Answer number one. I must love the Lord Jesus more and more. The Christians in Philippi already loved the Lord Jesus. But Paul wanted their love to always be growing more and more. Question. What about me? Is my love for the Lord Jesus always growing? How can my love for Jesus grow more and more? I must think about Jesus often. I must think about how he lived in this world as a person for me. I must think about how Jesus suffered and died on the cross for me. I owe Jesus my whole life. I must think about these things so I can love Jesus more and more. Answer number two. I must love other people more and more. Example. I am a Christian. I have a few Christian friends. I love them, but I don't make friends with anyone else. I just stick with my few friends. This is wrong. 
Paul says that my love should grow more and more means I must try to make new friends too. <coughs> I must always be looking for people to love and help. <coughs> My love will then grow more and more. Verses 9 and 10. Quote, this is my prayer for you, that your love will grow more and more, that you will have knowledge and understanding with your love, that you will see the difference between what is important and what is not, and choose what is important that you will be pure and blameless for the coming of Christ. End quote. Let's focus on these words in verse 9. Quote, that you will have knowledge and understanding. The King James Bible says, quote, in knowledge and in all judgment. <coughs> Look at verse 10. Quote, that you will see the difference between what is important and what is not, and choose what is important. End quote. The King James Bible says, quote, that you may approve things that are excellent. These verses now talk about the choices I make in my life. I must always think about choosing the best thing to do. Example, I am a Christian, but I am lazy. I don't think carefully about what I choose to do every day. I am very relaxed. I just do what I want all the time. 
I don't worry about making the right choice. So what will happen? Means I will do just what I want. I will make the wrong choices. Paul said that I should grow in love and judgment more. That way I will be able to approve or test everything I do. Means I will then make the right choices. Example number one. I am a Christian. I get home from work or college in the evening. What do I do? Do I just watch TV all the time? <laughs> or do I use my time carefully to worship God? Or do something to serve him. I have a choice. I must think carefully so I make the right choice. Example number two. I am a young person. I want to go to university. What should I study? Which university should I go to? Which university should I go to? carefully and pray to God to guide me? Or do I just study what I like? I have a choice to make. <coughs> Example number three. I have some free time. <coughs> How do I use my time? Do I think carefully and plan how to use my time? Or do I just do what I want? I have another choice to make. If I pray to God for help, he will help me make the right choices. It will not be hard to do. Verse 10, quote, That you will be pure and blameless for the coming of Christ. The King James Version Bible says, quote, that ye, that ye may be sincere and without offence. <coughs> God will test me. He wants me to be sincere. Means true or honest. everything I do, I will make the right choices. Then, when God tests me, I will be sincere. If I make the wrong choices, I will waste my time. 
Then, when I grow old, I will regret how I lived my life and the time I wasted. I could have used this time for God. What a shame. I will finish by reading chapter 1, verse 11. Quote, That your life will be full of the many good works that are produced by Jesus Christ to bring glory and praise to God. The King James Version Bible says, Quote, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. This means that if I live the right way, I will do good works. These good works are called fruits of righteousness. Can I just hold them? Chapter 1, verse 11, quote, To bring glory and praise to God. Question, how can I live, no, how can living a righteous life give glory to God? Number 1, when I do good works, I worship God. I am making God pleased because I am obeying Him. Number two, when I do good works, other people will see how God is making me a better person. They will praise God too. Summary. Remember, I am making choices every day. If I make the right choices, I will please God. May God help us all to test everything we do and follow his commands. Amen.